Hey, hey, what's going on, fellow and future millionaires? Welcome to the Millionaire University podcast. In today's lesson, we are going to share with you secrets number two and three of the 10 secrets of the millionaire mind. Earlier this week in episode 197, we shared secret number one, and today we are doing secrets number two and three. We will continue to share these secrets every Tuesday and Thursday for the next few weeks, or you can go to millionaireuniversity.com slash mind right now to get the entire video. Once again, that's millionaireuniversity.com slash mind. Go there right now to get the entire video for free while supplies last. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you secrets number two and three of the millionaire mind. Tame the brain and you can do anything. So let's go. Secret number two is embracing and accepting the belief, the fact that you should create a successful business and wealth. The amount of money that you make is directly related to the amount of value that you create combined with your ability to negotiate compensation for that value. The more value you give, the more money you can make, and the more money you make, the more value you can give. Rewire your brain to know that money is good. Money is not evil. The more money you make, the more successful you are in your business, and the more money you spend to grow your business and on other things, the more people you help, the more the country's economy grows and the more the world economy grows. By making money, you are not taking from someone else, but you are adding. It's not like a pie where there's a limited supply. The more money you make, the pie just keeps growing and gives more to other people as well. There are three levels of making money. The first is surviving. This includes things like buying food, paying for your shelter, AKA house, apartment, or whatever keeps you protected from the elements, paying for your bills and your basic needs. Until you have your own oxygen mask on, it's hard to help somebody else. Phase two is thriving. This is where you're able to make a little extra money. Maybe go on a trip or two. Maybe have a little nicer house, have a nicer car. Maybe you're able to contribute a little more to those in need, save for retirement. Not be so stressed out about where you're going to go out to eat, how you're going to pay the bills or take care of your family. The third phase is financial freedom. Wealth accumulation, you're essentially to a place where you don't really have to work anymore because either you have a business that is running and bringing in more money than you need to live or you have investments that are bringing more money than you need to live and thrive and you have an overflow, you have an abundance. In phase one, I think we would all agree that yes, you should make money, money is good. You need to be able to take care of your family to pay your bills. Phase two, thriving, that's a good thing as well. You're able to explore the world, not be as stressed out. You're able to give back, help the economy, pay taxes. You're able to put your kids in sports and different activities that help them grow and develop. And then phase three, you can truly step back from all the fears and concerns that we sometimes feel from money. Some people are afraid of making money because they're afraid of who they might become with money. But with money, you have options. Without money, you are bound. People are afraid of making money because they're afraid that they're gonna become a prisoner to that money. If you don't have money, you are guaranteed to be a prisoner to money. Having money gives you choices, gives you options. Most importantly, when you do have money, you can live your life's true purpose. Whether that's just taking care of your family and being an overall good person while managing your investments and or business, which is also helping a ton of other people, or really stepping into something that may have a deeper meaning to you, something that you're truly passionate about, something that you see in the world that could be changed. Just to be clear, when saying that you should make money, our intention is in no way to make you feel bad or guilty for not accumulating a certain amount of wealth but rather to help set you free and give you permission to not feel guilty or bad for making money, for creating wealth, for solving the problems and creating the value that will bring that wealth to you. Secret number three plays off of one and two, and that is all about making sure that you have the knowledge and understanding that once again, that society, that school, that your education, that your parents have most likely not taught you how to make money. They haven't taught you how to be a business owner, how to work for yourself. This did not used to be the case. 
people used to figure out how to make money for themselves, how to be creative, how to obtain that living, how to get a mentorship, to learn from someone else. But ever since the American Industrial Revolution, we have been trained to be workers, to work for someone else, not to work for ourselves. The cool thing is back in the day, even people who worked for themselves often didn't make a lot of money. Could you imagine combining the ability and desire to look within, to have to figure out how to make money for yourself, not work for someone else, combined with the power of the information age, with the internet, with everyone literally telling you exactly what to do to make millions, to make tens of millions of dollars, to live an incredible life, to create tons of value, to change the world in your own little way. What would that be like? Welcome to your life. That is what it's like. That is what we have at our fingertips. The most important thing is awareness. Being aware of this, being aware that our education system has changed very little. Sure, we use computers, we have some technology, but we still train our society, our people to be workers, to work for everyone else. This is not how it should be. From a young age, people should be given the option. What do you want to do in life? What's the best route to get you there? Let's start teaching you skills. Let's teach you about money. We do not do these things. But once again, you can only control what you can control. Focus on you. The most important thing is just realizing, being aware that this has occurred and what it means for you. And also knowing that while your friends and family and most of the people in your circle, your teachers of the past, while they had good intentions, they didn't know any better. They were trained to do the same thing. Our minds are trained to go with the pack. And once again, we have been trained to follow that status quo, to feel like we need to work for someone else, to feel like it's not safe to go out on our own. That's not true at all. It's significantly safer to do your own thing. Now, don't get me wrong. You got to do it in the right way and it takes time to build up. But the best time to plant a tree was 10, 20 years ago. And the next best time is today. And it looks like you've already planted yours because you're here with us. So just keep moving forward bit by bit. Once you create your own business, once you create your own money machine, that is true security. And there's nothing better. Tara and I have kind of learned not to ask a lot of people their opinions on things. Because essentially what you're doing is you're taking a bunch of people who have a bunch of different backgrounds and who have also been brainwashed by society to think you should do things a certain way. And they may or may not agree with you, but we tend to like to follow what people say. Or if they tell us something, we feel obligated to do it. Or then we feel upset if they told us something we didn't want to hear. Just do your thing. Surround yourself with the right people who support what you're doing, who get what you're doing. And look at the silver lining. Shoot. We were trained to do boring, mundane things. We were trained to be a soldier. I want to say grind it out, but I don't really like that word because it makes it feel like you were staying up all hours of night. But no, the truth is starting and growing a business is not any harder than working for someone else. It's really not. It's just a matter of retraining your brain, reprogramming your brain to put in that same amount of time or time on the side for a while if you need to. Realizing that business is not linear. You don't just get paid hourly for what you do, but the ROTI, the return on the time invested will be the greatest thing you can ever do. And the dividends it pays back will be exponential. The reason why they say most people overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in five years is because the first year you're learning a ton. You're getting things figured out. You're failing forward. You're doing research on, you're creating your product or service. You're learning how to sell or market that product or service. You're figuring out the technology, which sometimes will literally throw you off for an entire day. And you might feel like you've wasted a ton of time. You didn't make any money. No one paid you to do that work for that day. And your brain's not used to that. It's used to, hey, I'm owed this. I put in the time. I should make that money. But you're gaining experience. You're getting your first customers. Then you're getting testimonials and case studies. You're making and growing that initial seed capital that will continue to help you grow into the future. You're creating systems and processes. Maybe you're learning how to hire or outsource. But if you have a vision, if you have a goal, if you know where you're heading and you keep heading in that direction day by day, continuing to grow, learn, develop skills, build your network, building connections, building in, investing in, growing, improving the asset of you. Constantly focusing on what you're learning, not only the result, but what you're learning. People go to school for years, they make no money, they learn very little, and yet they celebrate when they leave. 
if you can train your brain to celebrate the things you learned, the action you took, getting up each day and getting after it, being in the ring, regardless of what happens, all along while you're still able to pay the bills and take care of your family, take care of your basic needs, then failure is truly impossible. You've already succeeded. And the financial growth and success will follow over time as a result. Once again, it doesn't just happen, but you'll have the ability, the knowledge, the understanding how to execute and how to make that happen and become your reality. Already, hope you enjoyed today's episode, today's Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, secrets number two and three. You can go to millionaireuniversity.com slash mind to get all 10 secrets right now, or stay tuned till next Tuesday for secret number four. Other than that, keep taking action. Execution is the key to success in business and life. What are your goals? What vehicle are you gonna to use to reach them? And then every day, just consistent and persistent actions. How much time you're gonna set aside each day, focus on the top tasks and keep going. And that's a little hint for secret number four that will be coming up next Tuesday on the Millionaire University Podcast. Until then, this is Justin Williams, your Chief Money Making Officer signing off. Class dismissed.